Springs champion, Miami Heat. And forward from St. Vincent, St. Mary's High School, number six, LeBron James. And forward from Georgia Tech, number one, Chris Bush. At center from UNLV, number 50, Joel Anthony. At guard from Arizona, number zero, Mike Bibby. The head coach of the Miami Heat is Eric Spolstra. Ladies and gentlemen, game one is next. And so it begins. The journey. The destination. The dream. You've lived your life for this one moment. A chance to march into the pantheon of greatness where a legacy of champions awaits. Decided. The Miami Heat, the most scrutinized team in NBA history, with their larger-than-life Big Three. They've come together to play their best basketball at the only time of year that really matters. And they'll face off against a Dallas Mavericks team, flying under the radar much of this season, and jumping on the back of an all-time great, combined with plenty of good old-fashioned team basketball, to put themselves in a position to capture their first NBA title. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to game one of the 2011 NBA Finals. Along with Mark Jackson and Jeff Van Gundy, Mike Green on hand, Doris Burke with us as well. What an intriguing matchup to wrap up this season. It's a rematch of the 2006 Finals, but these two teams so different than they were five years ago. Mark, let's start off with the Miami Heat. It's been so interesting to watch this team evolve. Now we know that they're not America's team, but even those people who view them as villains have to really respect 
and marvel at how good they've become, especially LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. Well, give these two guys a lot of credit because the bottom line is anything short of a championship would be a failure to them and would be celebrated by many. LeBron James questioned as far as the ability to close games, sent Boston home and then sent Chicago home. And Dwayne Wade didn't have his legs, but found a way to be that defensive stopper when it mattered most. Meanwhile, the Mavericks, they do it the old fashioned way with certainly help defense and ball movement plus the fact they have in his 13th year one of the great scores in the history of this game. Well Dirk Nowitzki is one of the most unique shot makers to ever play this game. Seven feet and on a tremendous roll coming off an historic series against Oklahoma City City team. You see the numbers but what's even more impressive he did it against good defense but this Miami defense is suffocating the best in the NBA. In 2010 playoffs, both these teams lost in the first round. Here in 2011, they're in the NBA Finals and ready to start to play for a championship. Welcome back to Miami. Spanish language version of today's game presented by ESPN Deportes. Use the SAP button on your television. Billy Kennedy throws it up and the 2011 NBA Finals underway here at the American Airlines Arena. Miami Heat getting the home court advantage. One game better in the regular season than the Dallas Mavericks in this 2-3-2 format. Pass inside to Bosch, and he's fouled, and will go to the free throw line. I was very surprised by the initial matchup by Dallas. Deshaun Stevenson against LeBron James, Sean Marion against Dwayne Wade. And then the very first catch by LeBron James, the Dallas Mavericks decide to double team him, forcing the ball out of his hand interesting strategy to start the ball game. These matchups and whether or not to double certain players and at what point is going to be fascinating to watch in these playoffs as Bosch knocks down the first Rick Carlisle's team have won 10 of their last 11 playoff games. They've been very good on the road in the postseason five and two. But they're playing against a heat team that's won four straight in the conference finals and are undefeated at home during these playoffs eight and zero oh at this arena. And, and double teaming LeBron James because of the switch by no, on, on to him by Nowitzki was one to keep him out of foul trouble. But I'll be interested to see if that's how they want to play LeBron James. Passing to me is his greatest strength. Meanwhile, Joel Anthony is on Nowitzki, who was really unguardable at times so far in these playoffs, especially the conference finals. Kid gets it inside, but a three-second violation called against Chandler. And automatically you see the adjustments made. Dirk Nowitzki, where he had a lot of room to roam against the Oklahoma City Thunder, turns his back the first time at the foul line, and they immediately double team him with Mike Bibby into full rotation. Mark, you played in an NBA Finals. Is there a different set of butterflies for a player to start game one of the finals? Well, there really is. You're excited. The interesting thing is they had two more minutes to warm up when we went to commercial break after the open. Neither team did. You don't need to warm up. Both teams are extremely loose and comfortable. James has been warmed up his entire playoffs. He was sensational against the Chicago Bulls in the Eastern Conference Finals. And a foul on the pass. So they'll take it out of bounds. James making many clutch shots and after the rap early in his career that he wasn't a closer and even earlier this season when the Heat had that problems crunch time he was at his best against the Bulls. Anthony right up on Nowitzki. Dirk Nowitzki knocks down his jumper. But I'm going to say this about James. The, the, the number of shots he took where everybody's making a big deal like he was two for 14. You look at everybody's numbers to end games. They're all lower. So it, it was a bunch of garbage. This guy's been a great player and a closer for the last four or five years. But he's on the Miami Heat, so it's looked at differently in a lot of ways. There's a shot clock winding down. Stevenson stays with him. That's a tough turnaround off the mark, marrying the rebound. Sometimes during the course of this season, it was like when we came on the air tonight, the Miami Heat are playing the Miami Heat opponent. That's how much scrutiny was on top of them. The I, focus has been on them all season long. I don't like that help by Joel Anthony coming off Nowitzki, leaving him wide open at the three. You've got to be able to guard Kidd in the post by himself. A couple of veterans at the point guard spot to start, Kidd and Bibby. Bibby playing in his first NBA Finals. Wade's jump shot. A rebound, Bosch knocked out of bounds. Still heat ball. 
Uh, I like the Mavericks defense early on in this game. Deshaun Stevenson making LeBron James a jump shooter. That time, Sean Marion defending Dwayne Wade. Make him a jump shooter and live with the results. You don't want these guys dominating the paint area. Now that's what makes this matchup so fun. The Heat in the playoffs averaging giving up only 88 points a game. And the Mavericks, the second highest scoring team in the playoffs behind Oklahoma City. Off the turnover. Nowitzki. Anthony certainly has the athleticism to deal with him on the outside as Nowitzki draws the foul. And he will go to the line where he has lived at times during these playoffs and is just an automatic. The way that Dirk Nowitzki is playing right now on the offensive end, there is nobody that can defend him one-on-one. -on -one. If you put a smaller guy on him, he can, he can shoot over him. You put a bigger guy on him, he now can put the ball on the floor and post up. Before, that, in the past, he had a weakness. He couldn't post up, and he was a soft player looking for jump shots. He's a complete basketball player today on the offensive end. He set a record in the conference finals for highest free throw percentage in NBA history for one series an incredible 59 for 61 and after that conference finals even Dwayne Wade noticed it he said he was watching on TV when they clinched how subdued Nowitzki and the Mavs celebrated after eliminating Oklahoma City and Jeff you've got to love that from a team that they only had their eyes on one thing well if you know Vitsky realized just how hard it is to get there as Bosch knocks in another mid-range jump shot how hard it is to get a chance to get a chance to play for it all. And he has a second chance. Chandler tried to throw it down, blocked by Anthony. Joel Anthony with a sensational play. Wade misses. And the Mavs will come the other way. Anthony's been one of the top shot blockers in these playoffs. A superb role player for Eric Spolstrup. Chandler not expecting the pass, second Mavericks turnover. Vitsky on Bosch. Bosch spinning. Blocked from behind. Good help defense from Stevenson. And he knocked it off Bosch. Mavs ball. Good defense by Deshaun Stevenson and Dirk Nowitzki. But I like what Miami's doing. You've got to get Chris Bosch some touches, forcing Dirk Nowitzki to play both ends of the floor. And Dallas has been playing both ends of the floor. Sean Marion, Anthony with his second rejection. Nowitzki knocks it away from behind. And it's last touch. By Nowitzki. Dallas is a different team than they've been over the years. You see Nowitzki getting on Sean Marion. They're a gritty team. They're a tough team. They're a defensive-minded team. That's not the type of Dallas Mavericks team we've seen over the years, With that's the emphasis. And we see Nowitzki yelling at Sean Marion, basically telling him he's got to shoot that open jump shot off the double team. Be confident. Do what you've been doing. You see Wade going to get the ball. Wade... At his brightest moment in the finals of 2006. Bibby shot one go. And Wade almost single-handedly brought them back from the 0-2 deficit. Miami Heat winning their first NBA championship that year. Jason Kidd shot one go. Rebound. Bosch lost it. And a new 24 for Dallas. Well, one thing, Coach, and I'm sure you see it early also, Joel Anthony's doing a poor job running back in transition, leaving the body of Dirk Nowitzki. That's because he's used to defending guys where he had to protect the paint. But Dirk Nowitzki, you got to meet him outside three-point. Chandler trying to draw the foul, and he does. LeBron James picks up his first, and Tyson Chandler in his first year with Dallas will go to the line. We talked about their improved defense. That's the number one reason why Chandler has really brought this team together defensively. Well, think about it. Of their starting five, the only guy that's really not defense first is Nowitzki. They start four guys in Marion, Stevenson, Kidd, and Chandler, who you could make the case are anywhere from good to very good to great defenders. And there you see some of the numbers to back it up. We've said this throughout the season. Maybe not the same impact Kevin Garnett had with the Celtics, but Chandler has brought that positive energy communication defensively for this team to help them turn it around. Well, to me, it really is the same type of impact. And the reason why is because he changed the culture. Where they had leaders that led by example, he's a guy that verbally going to express his feelings. All of a sudden, you had a voice tied to the system, and it's made a huge difference. All-NBA defense second team for Chandler. Wade finding James. 
Gaines has been knocking down the perimeter shot. Good defense from Sean Marion. Wade the drive. Couple of bounces, won't go. Fight for the rebound. Bosch gets it back up and in. And Bosch got poked in the eye. Marion running it down the other end. And that's Dallas's greatest weakness. Their inability to rebound the ball effectively. There was a problem earlier for Miami. Bosch has really picked up his rebounding. Now that Udonis Haslam is healthy again, it's helped them, certainly against Chicago. Three-point Miami lead as we approach the midway point here of the first quarter. Bibby lines up off the mark. Bibby is really struggling shooting the basketball in the playoffs. It's 27% in the postseason. I was reading an article today where he said at times it gets in his head. He gets frustrated and then starts pulling the string. He's got to shoot like a shooter. Be confident. Miski right back to Kidd. Trying to post up, Bibby. The two better point guards. Kidd shot won't go. Talk about rebounding. James averaging almost nine a game in the playoffs. Bosh. Neither team shooting well. A combined four for 19. Levitsky <laughs> off balance. Marion lost it. James, who is at a spectacular defensive class, in addition to all the offensive numbers, bangs that one in. And a foul. Chance for a three-point play as we have our first timeout. It is the NBA Finals, and you've got to put in the extra work on the defensive end, pursuing the basketball, willing to get his uniform dirty, gets up, and then is in attack mode. Once he gets the basketball, making a play. James and Bosch, all 10 heat points. Grown man move by LeBron James. Heat up by five. Back in Miami, the Heat defense, the story early here in game one. As we take a look at our Dodge driving success, how did they get here? Well, Dallas, six games to defeat Portland, then the sweep of the Lakers, so impressive, and then equally impressive defeating Oklahoma City in five games in the Western Finals. As for the Miami Heat, all three series, five games, they were tough, though. Sixers were a feisty team. Celtics, a key overtime loss, also an overtime loss by Chicago, but they won each series in five games and just getting better and better defensively, Jeff, and that's what opponents are so scared about this Miami Heat. It's not the offensive firepower, it's how great they are defensively. Absolutely suffocating. I just don't see how any team right now in the NBA in a series could consistently get quality half-court looks against this team. You have to score in transition, you have to try to get to the free throw line, it's like Dallas right now. They put in Jason Terry. Okay, so now who's he going to guard? Is he going on Bibby and Kidd going on Wade? But I truly believe it gives Dallas a chance to score. When you put Jason Terry in pick and rolls, you're going to get good looks with Dirk Nowitzki on the floor also. Nowitzki seeing a lot of double teams early. Kidd spots up, and those are the shots Dallas needs to hit. Jason Kidd knocks down the three. That's quality offense. You put him in pick and roll, you force the heat defense to rotate. You wind up with a high percentage shot. It's their first field goal in almost five and a half minutes. They've had some big games in terms of shooting the three, but as Jeff has said, they haven't faced this type of defense. Bibby, again, good open look. And again, misfires. Bosch the rebound over Chandler. Nice feed inside, and Wade gets it a go. You have to finish your defense with a rebound. Dallas was dominated on the board at times against Oklahoma City. And so too here early. Kid fires away. That misses Marion the rebound. There's the ball movement. It's been so impressive. Well, you see Miami, the rotation. Terry kicks it out. Kid again. And knocks down another back-to-back -back threes for Jason Kidd. And you can't play Jason Kidd like you used to be able to play him. There was a point where he was a non-shooter, wasn't a threat. 
Now he's a knockdown shooter, much improved shooter, and those are the type of shots that he can make you pay the price for leaving him alone. He's made the third most three-pointers in NBA history, and he has had a wonderful playoffs, playing in his third NBA Finals. Played two with New Jersey in 02 and 03, losing both times. A lot of contact with no call. Bosch again keeps it alive. He's been a terror on the boards. It's a good no call if you're Tyson Chandler's chest. <laughs> it just got concave. Anthony throws it away. Jason Terry, well, they'll need his offense. And he draws the foul on Bosch. So Terry will go to the line with all the defense on Nowitzki. Others will have to step up. All by himself. This is a practice shot. These are the type of shots that Jason Kidd has shot a thousand times over the course of, of the offseason. He's put himself in position for during these moments to knock them down. And you have to play Jason Kidd opposite of what you used to play. You used to play him close out short, make him shoot. Now he doesn't want to drive the score. You got to close to him and make him put it on the floor to score. They call that last foul now on Anthony. So Joel Anthony has two. Bosch doesn't have any. Udonis Haslam checks into the game. Nowitzki going to get his usual first quarter rest. And now Anthony will sit down. Juwan Howard, the veteran, playing his first NBA Finals is in. But Dallas went away from their normal rotation in the last series. They always took Sean Marion out about five minutes into each game. And because of the matchups right now, they've kept him in for a longer period of time. Terry, one of two Dallas Mavericks still with the team from the 2006 team. There's a third one who played for them, but he's now on the other team, Eric Gampier with the Heat. Meanwhile, for Miami, it's only Haslam and Wade who returned from that 2006 Finals. Here's Haslam. It's a great story, him returning from the foot injury, a big part of the Chicago series win. Wade foul, and he'll go to the line. That's something he did back in his first finals appearance quite often when he set a record with 97 free throw attempts in the six games. Especially when you're trying to defend them with Jason Terry. Smart move, putting Wade on the block and capitalizing on the size mismatch. We talk about the big three and their high percentage of points. They've got all of the points so far for Miami. Wade misses. Jason Terry has a strength on the other end offensively, but defensively, this is a problem. They're going to have to defend Dwayne Wade and the size and the scoring ability. So you put pressure on him and put a foul on him. Wade misses a pair. Jawan Howard with the rebound. Howard getting some unexpected early minutes. Stoyakovich right now on James. Chalmers for three. Marion, nice outlet pass to Kidd. Kidd hesitated. Howard picks up Terry. Sean Marion over Dwayne Wade. Too strong. And Haslam, the outlet to James. Stiakovic, part of that Dallas bench. The Mavs bench has been instrumental in their run to the finals. Wade. James for three. They've been knocking him down from downtown at important moments. Knocks his first attempt from that distance. And Miami back up by four. Timeout. Effortless range. As the Miami Heat, 16-12 lead here, first quarter of game one. ESPN's presentation. Welcome back to Miami, where the Heat have an early four-point advantage. Well, it was back on November 26th after a loss to this Dallas Mavericks team that the Heat record stood at just 9-8, and eight, and very little about them resembled what was a contending team for an NBA. More than anything, uh, all of us realize that uh, 
we were in this together, uh, and there was an incredible amount of noise uh, on the outside. Uh, and that's how you get to know each other. Uh, a lot of times when you're a little bit uncomfortable, uh, when there's a little bit of adversity. Um, and I think that's the process that LeBron and I uh, went through. Well, it certainly did bring them together, especially after that game. They went on that streak of winning 21 of 22. You know, he said it right from the start, Jeff, about they had a different timetable than everybody else. The expectations were through the roof, but they knew it was going to take some time for them to get this all together as they turn it over here. And one of the things that made it take more time than they even probably wanted it to was Wade was hurt all of preseason. Mike Miller and Haslam went down early in the season. They, didn't, they now have a quality eight guys with everybody back, but before that, they were not a deep team. And Haslam and Miller were expected to play substantial role, roles as we've seen their importance in some of these playoff games. Shot clock down to six. Kid will try it again. Way off Sean Marion the rebound. Stojakovic and Kidd and Terry, three of the best three-point shooters the NBA has seen. And Kidd throws it away. He hasn't had a lot of turnovers in these playoffs, but that was a bad pass. You know, and getting back to the struggles of the Heat, I don't think enough credit was given to Eric Spolster, the way he handled himself. He was calm, extremely confident, and patient with this group. Did a great job of coaching them through their tough time. And I would say this. Everybody's recognizing him now. I think he should have been recognized his first two years. He got 43 and 47 wins out of Dwayne Wade, a lot of flawed players, and guys on one-year contracts. He was able to keep them in the playoffs, which I believe helped Wade still want to stay here and James and Bosch want to come here and think they could win a championship. Chalmers, that won't go. This is Spolstra's 16th year with the organization. He started as a video coordinator. Terry, nice move, and goes down hard. LeBron James gets called for the foul, but it looked like Terry went down because of the ball hitting the rim the way it did. We'll see the replay as Terry will go to the free throw line. Jason Terry tried to sneak dunk LeBron James. Great move, and then tried to catch him at the rim. If anything, that could have been an offensive foul wiping away. Uh, James's momentum came into Terry, but it was after a bit of a push from Terry. Meanwhile, James now has two fouls. He's looking over at Eric Spolster saying, let me stay in. Well, I'm Eric Spolster. I keep him in the game because he's defending Pedro Storiakovic. So I keep him on the perimeter and make sure he doesn't pick up a third. And I keep him in because he's the best player on the planet. <laughs> Forget that. I'm not taking that guy out. But interesting, a little 2-2-1 press right now to try to slow them. And now they fall back into their zone. Meanwhile, the Mavericks with their first lead. A nice seven-point turnaround after they trail by six. J.J. Barea, all about 5'10 of them on LeBron James. James pushing off a little bit. That was close to being a third foul. And one of the things in the 2-2-1 press, it took the heat out of a two-for-one two possession, forced them to take time. Barea. Good extra pass, Dyakovich off the mark. Final seconds, Chalmers heaves it up. And that will end the first quarter. Dallas shoots 29% from the field, and they have the lead. As Dirk Nowitzki off to a slow start, but got good help from his bench, especially Jason Terry. LeBron James, eight points to lead all scores. First quarter complete here in game one. Dallas by a point.